put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Until Shattered Memories. That girl must really like that swing. I don't know many kids who stay out in sub-zero temperatures. Anyway, Harry Mason crashes his car, and he finds that his little girl, Cheryl, is no longer in the car, and starts searching the town of Sound Hill, where he crashed, for her. Seems like we've heard that one before. But soon after, the story completely disengages itself from the first game, and over the course of this, you kind of recognize things, but it feels kind of off. It's, it's not the same as the first game, and it really makes you wonder how this does relate to the first game. And I'd say it was a quite good decision to base it around the first game, which it didn't really need to. There are several big changes made with this from the, you know, it, it's a bit of a step in a new direction for the series, which is really good because it's, it, I guess it's like the second time this has been attempted, with the first one being with the fourth game, The Room. And that one, it was still a pretty good game, but several of the changes were, frankly, missteps, if you ask me. And since you're watching my video, you are asking me. After the fourth game, Homecoming and Origins came out. I haven't played Origins yet, but I hear that it is very much like the other games. In fact, so much so that it gets, you know, that it's very unimpressive. And so, yeah, they decided to take a bit of a risk again, and this one really works out. Not everything that they did was, you know, completely perfect, but to start off, this is developed, this was developed for the Wii, and as such really takes advantage of the motion controls. The you know, you're still walking around areas, you know, exploring, and the, the Wiimote is now Harry's flashlight, which is now handheld, and you can still turn it on or off. It also, you know, determines which, you know, obviously which direction you're looking in, and, you know, thus also which direction you're moving in, and it's, it's one of the better uses of the you know, the, the Wiimote controlling the camera kind of thing. It's still third-person view. Most of the puzzles are very much based on this, you know, motion control. Hardly any of them are challenging. They're on the level of homecoming, if that. Mostly, it's just, excuse me, extremely obvious what you're supposed to do, and really, it's just utilizing the motion controls. You know, you are, you know, you're opening a cabinet, for example, and inside is, you know, what, what you're looking for. Now the, and, and this actually makes, you know, this coupled with the fact that you really don't find any items that you're supposed to use other than the key to the next door, which often is in the same room as the door. So, you know, there's no inventory, and basically a lot of the game you feel like you can just really go through it at your own pace, and it really is just exploring, you know, taking in the world. 
this heavy focus on motion controls really makes it immersive with, you know, there's pretty much nothing that takes you out of the experience. Nothing makes it really feel like a game, you know, and, you know, you're never just pressing a button to, you know, progress. However, I will say that it is not as fun an immersive experience and not as thoroughly an immersive experience as the Penumbra collection or the Penumbra trilogy, I guess. There are a few reasons for this. Perhaps you should just briefly cover like I said, you don't find items other than the key to the next door you're headed towards. You do find things, but they're all mementos. There, there are no health pickups. They're basically, yeah, mementos, and then there are flares, which I'll cover in a bit. And the mementos, yeah, it's just, you know, little things that have some meaning to someone. You know, it's, it's these little glimpses into someone else's life. And you do still have these, you know, brief, tragic, you know, bits of tragic stories from other people's lives as the other games had. And this one, you know, like I said, with making it very immersive, you don't really stop and read a block of text at any point. Which is not, this wasn't a bad element in the other games, but again, they're doing something different. And in this, instead, you'll intercept a voicemail or you'll get a text message. The cell phone is, you know, very much, it, there are a bunch of things that have to do with the cell phone. Anyway, the, the, the Penumbra Collection, one thing is that there is no way to attack in this game. When the monsters attack you, you can defend yourself. But that's the closest it, come, it, it comes to that, and there is no way to hide yourself. Oh, excuse me. The hiding is less useful than Penumbra. Two train tracks in my mind went haywire there. And the. basically using objects against enemies, sort of, is much more limited here than it is in Penumbra, where in Penumbra you can distract with by making noises. In this, you can basically, some objects, when you pass them, you can, you know, knock them over so that, you know, very Blues Brothers, so that it will slow down the monsters slightly. Enough with the Penumbra comparisons. I guess we should just jump fully into the nightmare sequences. This is this game's other world, which has been completely redone. The only thing that really remains from the other games of the other world is the fact that it it's again a completely different you know you're walking through some of the same areas you've already been, but it's covered in this you know it, it doesn't look quite the same now when in the other games it was this you know rusty metal gray grading and these grotesque image, images. This has no grotesque imagery pretty much whatsoever. You know, the closest thing it gets to anything, you know, really unsettling is some of these tragic stories and Dr. K, the psychiatrist, can be a little creepy and eccentric. I'll cover him some more later, but yeah, the that that's pretty much the only element that remains from the other games. In this, it is not metal grading and grotesque imagery, it's that everything ices over, and 
basically this isn't a bad idea, you know, on, on the surface, I suppose you could say, because this thing of, you know, ice and the so, sort of perpetual winter, this kind of thing, it is very isolated, very unwelcoming. It, it speaks to something in our brain that, you know, it, you know, we, we have this pr primal urge to get away from seemingly endless cold outside areas. You know, it's, it's kind of, you don't want to sleep out in the cold, you could freeze to death in your sleep. You know, you don't want to settle somewhere there's a lot of ice and snow, you don't know if you, you know, maybe nothing will really grow there or not enough to sustain the tribe, you know, that kind of thing. So, from that, the, the, from that perspective, the decision makes sense. Now, something of the problem is that it can be pretty difficult to see the basic you know, even though you, at least sometimes, not always, are moving through areas that you've already been, you know, visited, you know, you're not going to necessarily have committed to memory what things look like and, you know, know where you're going. And though you do have a map, Harry is really slow about pulling it out. Sorry. In the middle of it's it's you know he has a map on the cell phone. You know again, it's it's a good use of that. It it makes sense and it's you know the inclusion of the cell phone is smart because everyone has a cell phone today. And in 1999 when the game series started, that was not so. You know and, and certainly yeah I'd, I'd say there were still many had cell phones maybe but not everyone and they certainly couldn't do quite as much as they can today now yes the the map takes too long to you know get out and put back in and there's no like mini map you know i i don't know why harry can't just you know check it as he's running when you have the map out, you know, if, if you're not looking at the full, I, I suppose there's sort of a mini-map, but you can't strafe when you have the, the mini-map out, and you move slowly. You can't run when you have the mini-map out. And I don't know, I just, I personally would be able to run whilst, you know, sort of checking the map. Or maybe you could just have it, like, hold it at your side, and then you know, really quickly pull up, okay, am I still going in the right direction? Okay, good. Back down, and then run. You know, I, I don't know why they, yeah, they, they made some wrong calls with this. So yeah, you get lost a bit of the time, and it really doesn't help that a lot of the possible paths you can take can either send you into a dead end, or send you back to the place you started. All of this would not be a problem if you weren't rushed through the nightmare sequences. And this, you know, the, the fact that you're chased through most of the nightmare sequences, a lot of them anyway, is not a bad thing. It just, because you have to do these things that are very slow, yeah. And it's not like, even like you have these, these brief safe places. It's not like, you know, say you could occasionally, the, I mean, the problem is the creatures open doors. So just because you go through a door it doesn't mean that the creatures aren't going to follow you. You know, imagine if you, every time you went through a door, or at least every couple of times, you could block the door temporarily, you know, put a chair in front of it um, under the doorknob, you know, Bring out the map, see, okay, where am I going? What path should I take? If this bought you just 30 seconds, this would greatly improve these sequences. Now, the creatures themselves, basically there's two types. 
you know, both of them are very humanoid. One is this skinny, pale one, and the other is almost the same. It just has this sort of a marionette kind of thing to it. It's, it's like a, a, a doll with very, very thin or more or less invisible joints. You'll forgive me for not, you know, taking the time to know exactly what they looked like while I was being chased by them. Basically, they run at least as fast as you. And if they grab onto you, if just one grabs onto you, you have to toss that one at off. That's the only thing they can do. They can't, like, claw at you. They, they, I don't know, they're free huggers, I guess. And you gotta shake the Wiimote nunchuck in the direction that, you know, that, that they latched onto you from, which might mean, you know, say there's three on you, they're going to be from three different directions, say, you know, left, right, and the front, and you have to shake in all three of those directions. As far as I can tell, at least you don't have to remember which of them, you know, which of them, what direction, what order they attacked you in, and do it in that. As far as I can tell, you can just do it, but yeah. And it doesn't always properly respond. It, it can be pretty frustrating, but again, it, it is somewhat immersive. You know, it is at least a good idea that they did something like that instead of you just having to, you know, you do have to do a real movement with the Wiimote nunchuck, so that's, that's good. I wish there weren't quite so many of them. In fact, I'd really love if this had difficulty settings. I've seen games, can't offhand recall examples, but there are games where you can adjust the difficulty setting for different elements of the game. I wish that you could tell the game, make these puzzles harder and make these monsters easier. You know, just just a few less monsters would really be great. One good thing is that they have some trouble finding you if you turn off your flashlight and if you're not running, if you don't make too much noise, they have a little trouble finding you. You can also hide, as I mentioned earlier when I corrected my gaff. And, I don't know, I, I haven't really found any use for the hiding, frankly. Again, Penumbra, I know I said I was done, but in that game, basically if you hide, especially if you use something to distract, you know, say you're in one end of the room, and you have to get to the other end of that room, and you know you have to get to the other end of that room, but there's an enemy right in the middle, if you pick something up, if you're completely quiet and the, the enemy hasn't seen you yet, and you throw something in, you know, towards the, the opposite wall, you know, it'll lure the enemy over there. And in the time that it's over there, you can try to sneak past if you, you know, got ice cold blood, or you can just run and, you know, get to the new area and hopefully you'll be a little bit safer there. And yeah, in, in this, you just hide, and you just wait, and eventually they find you, so, yeah. And, and besides, all of these sequences are just, you have to get from point A to point B. So, there's really no point in just waiting, you know. Now, these sequences, actually, the flares. This is the only way to hold off the enemies. You will on occasion find flares, and these are very rare. There's basically at most one per nightmare sequence, I've found anyway. And yeah, basically you, you pick it up, they're, they're fairly easy to find. They did at least make that, you know, they, they give off a, a light for some reason even before being turned on. Excuse me. And you decide when to, you know, activate it. When you activate it, as in real life, I guess, they don't last very long. Once you've done so, you can drop it at your feet and then you can not pick it up again. So you can basically, say you're being, going up a stairwell, you can drop the flare at the bottom of that stairwell and until it runs out, the creatures won't run up the stairwell to come at you. So yeah, you know, stuff like that. 
and the dropping the flare is sometimes necessary because Harry can't even multitask well enough to check the map whilst holding a lit flare. I don't know, I guess he just doesn't realize that he has two hands, you know, but yeah. These sequences are quite intense and they're the closest thing the game really gets to being genuinely scary is the, the dread you may feel for the f next nightmare sequence, you know, and yeah, this, you know, when, when everything ices over and you know, oh crap, there are going to be creatures and I'm going to have to run, you know, that kind of thing. But, yeah, it would really, you know, the, the changes I suggest would really have helped. And, frankly, too much of the time, I'm just really frustrated at how slow Harry is moving. You know, even when you know that there's a creature near you, you often can't avoid it. It's not even like, you know, you can say, okay, well, I'll just run and, you know, I don't know, I, maybe they didn't think that they would, that the creatures would still be scary if you could outrun them, at least briefly. You know, I would really have liked also if there was a short burst run feature, you know, like in, crap, I don't know, I guess Grand Theft Auto Vice City, yeah, I know uh, a lot of you are going to think that game's ancient, but I haven't played that many new games. But yeah, you know, a short burst of running where afterwards you have to stand completely still and really, so you have to choose the right time to use it, that would really have made a lot of sense. And frankly, that would be realistic, you know, the adrenaline, you get, you know, really, so yeah, anyway. But yeah, for the rest of the game, there are no enemies, they, they only exist in these nightmare sequences. And basically, you're just taking it at your, at, at your pace, other than these nightmare sequences, and just going around, exploring, finding mementos, you know. One really smart thing with this that, you know, is obviously also the most unique aspect of it is the psychological profiling. You know, like other games, it, you know, changes some things based on what you do, but unlike other games, what makes it unique is that, yeah, it, it genuinely is psychologically profiling you. It is trying to find out, you know, what kind of person are you, and then use that against you to scare you, you know. It affects the characterizations of the people you meet, you know, very much you know, the, the way they act, the way they look, all these uh, sorts of things. And frankly, it's a really good psychological profile. I, I played it completely honest, you know, nothing, not holding back at all. And it freaking nailed me. It, it got me exactly right. And yeah, it really used it against me. It, you know, it, it had some things where, I'm not sure I'd really say they were, they were scary, but they were basically upsetting. It, it's, you know, the game finds out what is going to bother this person. How, how do I, you know, I, I need to find an exposed nerve and just jam a needle in there. And then it does so, you know, and this adds, replayability obviously in that you can try to see some of the other ones and you know basically I, I think all of the Silent Hill games pretty much have at least more than one ending. Actually I'm not entirely sure if this one has more multiple endings but you know the, the other ones do and this one they take it that one step further and saying well there are going to be multiple versions of scenes throughout the game you know, it, it very much affects the, these people, including Harry himself. And the... 
I suppose I could talk about the voice acting. It's pretty good for the most part. I'd say that the Harry does have some lines where he doesn't sound it doesn't sound completely real, it sounds a little forced, but it's certainly some of the better Silent Hill voice acting. It's much better than the early games of the series. The story is one of the real key parts. You know, as with the other Silent Hill games, it's really very story driven and this is a story you really find yourself getting into. You know, I, I was constantly wanting to know more about the story and what was really going on, you know, and yeah, the, the game uses that really well. It's, this is somewhat more of a psychological thriller, you know, the, the others pretty much psychological horror, and this one just really, I suppose one of the best examples is that other than these nightmare sequences, there's not that much clearly supernatural going on in this Silent Hill. You know, where the other games, it's patently obvious, something is clearly not right here. But in this, you're just kind of wondering what is really going on. Not so much, you know, what is the supernatural force behind this, but you know, something's going on, you want to get to the bottom of it. You know, Harry wakes up, you know, the title Shattered Memories, Harry doesn't remember everything, and he doesn't realize that at first. You know, it's it's kind of, you know, and some of the encounters he has with other people, yeah, has these sort of, you know, what is, you know, wait, this doesn't make this doesn't hold up with this other thing, and Harry's like, oh, wait, yeah, that's right, you know, something, something is going on, and you really want to find out what it is, and the game just does a fantastic job. It's, it's one of the best storytelling experiences, you know, the best modes of storytelling in a game that I've really, or at least, yeah, it's, it just really drew me in, and I was constantly you know, wanting to know more about the story. I mean, Silent Hill has always had great stories that really, you know, got you into it, but I don't know, it, it's maybe also, like I say, that there is no supernatural element here, there, no, no clear supernatural element. And, yeah, you, you kind of, you keep trying to piece it together, trying to figure out the logical explanation, what is really going on. Yeah. But, but yes, as a, f a few more examples, other than the nightmares, there's nothing that is really completely outlandish. This Silent Hill isn't really abandoned. You know, the, there's not people walking the streets, but there's a bitter snowstorm going, so, you know, and, and some of the roads are blocked with these, you know, big piles of snow. So, yeah, it makes sense that people aren't out and about, you know, but when you actually go around, there, there are people around, you know, there, there are several characters in all of these games that you meet, but, I don't know, this, this one just really felt like yeah, like, like it isn't completely abandoned, and... But, but yeah, so th obviously some of these things are going to really bother some, you know, long-time fans of the series. And, yeah, it's really, you know, it, it is a gamble, and they really had to... You know, some people are just not going to like this game, especially if they're very attached to the old Silent Hill, which I myself am. I just, I like this different direction. But, yeah, it, it very much depends on if you like that it's now a psychological thriller over psychological horror, and if the, you know, if, if there being no combat and 
you know, the, having these chase sequences in place of that, if that appeals to you or that bothers you. Before I forget, uh, one thing that the, the chase sequences really reminded me of were the Dahaka, the Guardian of the Timeline, chase sequences from Prince of Persia Warrior Within. You know, this, you know, do not slow down kind of thing. And one thing I would say that that game has on this is that in that you, you aren't so much wondering where you're supposed to go. So in that it's just about rushing as much as you can. Whereas, again, in this I think it would have been smart if they had brief safe places so you could, you know, figure out, am, am I going in the right direction still, that kind of thing. I should talk more about the cell phone. Briefly on the map, I guess finishing up the map, basically. You know, it, as before, it you know, tells you where you are, it, it has street names and everything, and it shows you in what direction you're, you know, pointed. And unlike the others, it does not automatically update the map with, you know, these blocked paths. Instead, it, you know, just briefly want to interject. In, you know, instead of these roads where there's just a big hole in the road, they are now blocked with snow, you know, just to, again, really not supernatural, very natural, in fact, you know, slightly freaky, but still basically could happen kind of thing. But, but yeah, you know, you yourself can draw on the map, although it does really appear that it, after a while, erases what you've, you know, put in, so I guess it's not for the long run kind of thing, but yeah, you know, if you're having trouble finding your way, it can help to draw on the map, and you can erase it yourself as well. And this is another place where the motion controls really work well. I mean, it is difficult to keep a steady enough hand, and I wish it would allow you to zoom in more, but still, you know, you can actually draw, you can even, you know, you can draw whatever you want, you can draw the path you think you're supposed to take, and then, you know, bring out the, the mini-map kind of thing in the lower half, in the lower corner of the screen, and, yeah, you know, follow that as, yeah. Now, the, the cell phone is also where you save. It also has checkpoints, but so basically sometimes it'll put you at a checkpoint instead of exactly where you saved, but usually you won't particularly lose progress. Now, the cell phone, other than having the map and the save feature, you can also take pictures of ghosts. You know, if you, if you get to a place where you know, it, it again has the static kind of thing. I do kind of wish that the static had been substantially different for the creatures in the nightmare sequences and the, you know, the, the ghosts that you find. You know, that's the, the one other supernatural element and, and these kinds of things outside of the nightmares because it made, made me you know, very neurotic about moving around in the not-nightmare sequences. I kept having to tell myself, you're not in the nightmare sequence, no enemy's gonna come out, you know. Anyway, the... the you know, so, so you can take pictures, and, and really it seems to work, you know, no matter what, no matter where you want to take a picture, you can, and... yeah. Then it has... You know, you, you can receive text messages from characters you've met, or sometimes it'll be, like I said, you know, these brief bits of a tragic story that happened to someone. And sometimes you'll get voicemails from, you know, you, you'll intercept voicemails, and those are also, you know, tragic stories. And sometimes these texts and voicemails basically tell you what you're supposed to 
do to proceed. You know, there'll, there'll be a little, you know, puzzle or mini game kind of thing. The let's see what else does it have it. And, and you can also, you know, you can also receive actual calls, and sometimes characters that you've met will, yeah, call you, and, yeah, and you can also call them. Although this doesn't particularly, you know, forward the plot. It's basically like a, a gimmick, pretty much. It, I, I do wish that it would, you know, contribute more or maybe it just wasn't that yeah but you know it's it's something they can brag about you know this is what we put in the game kind of thing but yeah you can call any number that you find in the game you know and it seems like they all have you know that you can actually reach that person or there's a voicemail message or not a voicemail a, a answering machine kind of thing you know the length this is a very short game I completed in five and a half hours and if I knew exactly what I was supposed to do I could probably rush through it even faster you know if, if I play it again it might take even less you know and yeah I, I could imagine that many will prefer to just, you know, if, if you're only going to play it once, if you just want a tailor-made psychological thriller experience that one time, just rent it. You know, don't shell out the big bucks to buy it. I suppose that pretty much does it. Yes. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.